So let's look at the sacrifice for survival. So that's, yes. now that's another medium. So you are multi-talented working <laughs> in many different mediums. Yeah. And this is, is this a print or is this? Um, sacrifice for survival. Well, well they're photographs okay. and montage. Okay. okay. And uh, montage being like being a collage. Like a collage, only it's more, um, it's less integrated into the actual uh, image and, and has a more pronounced view. Yeah, so montage would have like a piece of sculpture on top of it. Or yeah, like I think, that. It, yeah. A collage is more two dimensional. Yeah, right? I yeah. think so. Yeah. Um, so, anyway. Uh, the, this is an interesting piece because, in a way, it started all of this. Uh, oh, really? A few, a, and it, it kind of shows the consistency of it all, and and how this, wh and why this was such a natural fit for me. Uh, a few many years ago, my wife and I were uh, taking a stroll on Bethany Beach in Maryland, mm -hmm. uh, May around May 31st. And which is which happened to be a full moon, and around that time of year happened to be the migrating period for the horseshoe crab. Oh. Of course, we didn't know that at the time. It was just a beautiful night to take a romantic stroll on the beach. And as we were walking, I saw a horseshoe crab come up on onto the beach, and, um, uh, and I said, "Oh, look, there's a there's a horseshoe crab." And so we just continued walking, thinking much of it, and as we continued, we saw a couple of more come up, and before you knew it, as we walked, there were hundreds, mm -hmm. literally hundreds, like an invasion of horseshoe <laughs> crabs, which was appropriate because they're sort of futuristic looking anyway, but... Uh, prehistoric, you think they're futuristic? That's I think they're both, I think that's what's nice about them, they're, pre they're, they're actually, what's great about horseshoe crabs is that they're, they're living fossils. Yeah. They're living. They're they're just frozen in an evolutionary time warp. So. Uh, and they're endangered just, right now, aren't they? In the I haven't. I don't know. I, I didn't hear that. I think they're, they're getting frankly. scooped up with something. I remember reading about this recently. And I don't know. In any yeah. case, they 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 kept coming up on shore, and um, then uh, which kind of uh, was startling and interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, so. That the next morning, early in the morning, we, hold, we heard all this commotion in terms of b bird life on the beach, and it looked out, we looked out the window, and what I saw was uh, predatory birds coming down in great numbers, attacking these oh. these horseshoe crabs because it was the mating season, and they were laying their eggs. Oh, the horseshoe crabs were laying. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So these birds were attacking them. Uh, and a few hours later, we went out, and there were all these horseshoe crab carcasses on the beach, which I then uh, assembled into site-specific sculpture on the beach. Wow! Photographed it. Wow! I made a, a documentation of it through f through photographs, and and then s some of which I cut out and sort of rearranged uh, uh, and made sort of. Um, visual statements in, in their own right. And so this is the sacrifice. Sacrifice for, so the they're, they're, they're sacrificing, sacrificing themselves to in order to survive, so they're laid their eggs, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I wonder, it'd be interesting to find out the life of the horseshoe crab. Do they die after it anyway? You know, like the salmon lay their eggs and then they're, I don't know. I don't know, I don't they're, they're a mystery creature, Well, they're, aren't they? they're survivors, yeah, though. Yeah, they <laughs> certainly are, they really are. And this next one, I love this one, the royal family. Those yeah, are, those are three. it's one of my favorite pieces. Yeah. Really, yeah. really cool. is, that series. Yeah. Um, I think mostly because um, of the materials that were used. You know, I, I, was, I was using uh, concrete pigment, you know, the, the pigment that they use to paint the yellow lines on the roads. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I was using felt tar and wax wow. to do these. Um, and I think, I think what interests me most about that and really what inspired me most about, about, about that is that for years uh, as a professor uh, lecturing on this subject, uh, the subject of the Paleolithic cave paintings in Lascaux, mm -hmm. in Lascaux France, um, there's one image in particular that resonates with me very deeply, and it still has, um, still has that effect on me. And I, I, I made a copy of it uh, that I they downloaded from the internet. It's um, 
it's it's called it well it has many names or several names but but, it, but, but we've it, named it our generation has yeah named has, it. we don't know what it was called yeah generation. yeah we're scholars or whatever and have named it the sorcerer well, or or the shaman but we're talking fifty thousand BC yeah we're talking Paleolithic period twenty five thousand twenty five thousand twenty five thousand BC, BC for this particular okay. uh, image and it's wonderful because um, because it illustrates uh, a, f a kind of um, uh, image that uh, relates to a period in time that was pre-scientific, okay, uh, and, and an attempt to explain the universe through, uh, through images on the cave walls, and these images, very powerful in many ways, such as uh, this particular image. Um, and not only are they pre-scientific, but what interests me about them in this particular image as well is that they tend to be non-judgmental. You know, no judgments are made in terms of whether it's good or bad. It, the only judgment is whether it works, <laughs> and and the only, and 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 at, whether it works as it re, as they relate to right. their survival. So it's really art for survival's sake. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a really interesting subject. Mm -hmm. What was art in those days? It yeah. wasn't art. Was wasn't it? art. It wasn't art. Yeah. We call it art. But then mm. it was part of their culture yeah. and what they did. Yeah. yeah. So I try. I try to. I wouldn't say identify with this or those images in the royal family. Uh, I kind of wished. I kind of, frankly, wish I could. <laughs> uh, but that's impossible. So I. I just try to uh, peel off the layers of my uh, education and in my and my um, consciousness, uh, things that would make me more judgmental about my own work. Take away that. Take that exactly. away. Take away. And try right. to look and, at it purely. Right. And each piece is worked on, is worked on, and worked on, and worked on. So it was, it was sort of a, pos uh, a positive and negative experience because I'd be doing some, I'd be doing things, and then I'd be getting rid of them as well right. and then coming back to it come over and over again so would you s so in your mind you didn't have a family in mind it became the family after it was done yes. would you say yeah yes. so the images would just would yeah just i mean evolve. the title is is sort of a just like a, a, a play on that that grouping really right right you know. has nothing to do with your thought process no. you didn't go ahead no. oh, i'm going to do a painting no. of the royal family no no, no not no, at all no. No. it's very subconscious and yeah. you just allowed it to happen mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's an amazing way and, to work and i yeah. didn't know I, frankly i really didn't know where it was going to lead and yeah. i love working like that it could be very frustrating i envy people like you, <laughs> who who have things more well planned out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I wish I could say I do. I think, no, I think painting. I I think all of art controls us. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say that? I hope so. That we yeah. that they that they, they, they t it takes over as we're mm -hmm. working on it. I mean, we have ideas in our head, yes. but as soon at least in my case, as soon as I put something down on paper, it kind of takes on a life of its own. Absolutely, you know. yes, and uh, but I. I, you never know when to stop. Well, that's, that's the thing. The Usually, my wife tells me, <laughs> <laughs> "Don't touch it anymore." <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> no. Yeah, well, I always tell everybody that I know, "Don't listen to anybody." So I don't know. Maybe Alex could come into my house too and tell me. <laughs>